So we live in a society that praises food and for good reason. Food gives us energy, it makes us feel happy, and it gives us memories like Thanksgiving dinner or basically any dinner that you go to with a bunch of family and it's all your favorite recipes. And it's all good, but we need to recognize that food is something that we need to be cautious of. It's not something that we can simply eat and be like, we ate it, it's fine, we're perfectly fine. We need to kind of put more perspective in what we put in our bodies and what we should have as a standard of our food production. And I understand that several people have already heard this from their parents, like, eat your greens, have a balanced diet, et cetera, et cetera, especially with the whole New Year's resolution thing, I'll be more healthy, I'll go on that diet. Um, but we just need, need to push forward. And for this to happen, we need to see how food, what food provides us. And we should know why we should care about our food. So, food provides energy. Carbohydrates turning into energy so that we can use in our daily activities. Why should we care about this though? We should care about this is because we know that different foods affect us in different ways. And it's not only our bo body appearance, but it's also our mind. For example, if you ate a slice of pizza at school and you went to sit down in your classroom and you're not really doing any activity, you're going to feel lazy and kind of sluggish. It's because carbohydrates, when they're not used properly, they make you more sluggish. They, you're not using the energy that you are consuming. And then it gets deposited as fats and sugars in your body. Now, going to fats and sugars, these affect, uh, these affect your body through the brain. And in particular, they kind of manipulate you in a way. So in a larger scale, for a more minute scale, uh, the brain has several functions uh, that, have, that are affected from food. So the stratum system, and this is all in your neural system, the stratum system controls your self-control and the combination of decision making and impulse control system is also there. And the insula system is your self-awareness. Now, with bad habits and um, bad eating habits, all these areas become weak. They're not as strong as before. And so you, you lose self-control of the right amount you should eat and the right amount that you want to eat. And, uh, and once you have this deficiency, you lose your self-control you make impulses, impulsive decisions, and you are not self-aware of your own body or your mind. And this manipulation that happens all around the world thus creates an addiction. Now, addiction is first off, well, first off we made the perfect word for food, which is comfort. Comfort food that stays beside us always on those lonely nights on Valentine's Day, or it makes us feel happy, and it's always a friend to have. It will always be there for you. It makes you feel happy. However, it's just like drugs. The happiness is there in the beginning, but the effects are scarring. Now, if we see here, this is a normal brain, and in this area, you receive your dopamine hormones. Dopamine hormones are basically your happy hormones. Um, when you eat a slice of pizza, let's say, let's keep that the standard. When you eat a slice of pizza, a normal person will receive this amount of, this like level of form, uh, dopamine hormones, which is good because it's only one slice. However, for someone who is obese, it's diluted because one piece is not enough now. Now, he doesn't receive as much pleasure, he or she doesn't receive as much pleasure as a normal brain would. They lost their self-awareness, they lost their self-control. And with this, we then have the scarring effects, which is disease. Now, we have already seen that uh, several diseases um, contribute to a huge percentage of death. Uh, obesity has probably the highest ranking uh, contri contributions to our mortality rates, and you've seen it through heart disease and strokes and diabetes, and this is even in our children. And we need to create a, more, a higher standard, especially because food productions, as I said, they want you to get hooked. They want you to get that addiction to their sugary and high calorie, high sugar, sugary and fat um, food production. So since they know that you're going to get an addiction to this, they push that out. They make it cheaper for you to mask 
pr uh, consume it. And so they also push for more antibiotics so that they can churn more and more products for you. This then creates a lower standard for our food production and thus contributes to one in six Americans be getting sick, 126,000 getting hospitalized, and 3,000 dying from foodborne diseases. People don't understand that these antibiotics, though they turn a bunch of food out, and we do need the food because, as we've seen, there's 7 billion people. We need to, a lot of people will say, like, we, we have 7 billion people. We need to feed all these people. However, we already overeat. But we need to see that these antibiotics that they pump into our food should not be there. It should not, uh, we should not keep that standard of our food production. And so we also have to see, though, the need. As I said, this basically relies on us. Since companies know that you're going to get that addiction, they're going to make it the most viable option ever. However, we also have to see that we need to also buy more things from our grocery stores. We have to buy more things from, uh, make things at home. And I know it's very difficult for us because we have quick paced lives. However, we need to always have that more family community where we go to the grocery store, which actually healthier options are cheaper in, especially because you buy in bulk usually. And by cooking at home, you have a more interaction with your family and you have a healthier living style. So what can we do? Well, first of all, we can start looking at labels. Look at your nutrition labels like it's a contract. No, we're signing up for And many people actually don't know this, and they usually just look at the calorie count, because that's pretty much what people think that matters. It's like, I just want to stay thin, go to that maximum 2,000 calorie count. Um, but we also need to look at these key ingredients. The smaller the amount, the better. And that's how you know that it's actually natural or organic. Because FDA actually does not control the natural label. I'm pretty sure that Cheetos is not natural. And so we can, by looking at these nutrition labels that they clearly put exactly what is in there, we can see what we're putting into our body and have a more balanced diet. And with social media is a very crucial part. A huge trend nowadays, for, especially for females, um, is to have the perfect body, especially we see models and um, advertisements where we see these models holding a huge burger and eating that. And we are like, yes, we love girls that are super skinny but have a good appetite. But we need to show people that this is not the true standard. They are models who have fixed diets. They are also people who are photoshopped. And so we need to instill in our family, especially like at the table, when you're eating a home meal, we have to instill that you are good with your body if you are healthy. Have a balanced diet, have a balanced body, and that's how you know that you will be happy. So in the end, why should we care? Because we care about ourselves, and we care about each other, and we care about our loved ones. And it's just something that you have to decide, do you want an easier life in which you, can, you don't have to see your loved ones suffer or you suffer as well? Or do you want a hard life where you are not having that self-control or self-awareness of even, even yourself? So that is why should we, we should care about our food. And we should pay attention to what we put in our body because we do love each other and we do love the people who have affected us throughout our lives. Thank you.